14% sunny days last year. 14. That was the statistic. 14 days it was sunny. 14%. The rest were cloudy or severely cloudy or rain. What are you talking about? I don't know either. I know we got to this Bible stuff. One minute, one minute. meeting order. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to our city council meeting. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Buckner. Here. Reverend Campbell. Here. Mayor Jones. Here. Dr. Miller. Here. Mr. Saunders. Here. Mr. Shanks. Here. Mr. Tomer. Here. Vice Mayor Vogler. Here. Mr. Whittle. Again, welcome, everyone, to our first council meeting of the year. We'll have our invocation by Fred O. Shanks III. We ask everyone to please stand. Following that, our Pledge of Allegiance. Please pray with me. Holy Father, as we enter the new year, we reflect upon the past and see much for which 
see so much for which we have to give you thanks. Thanks for that which you have provided us as individuals and as a community. We're encouraged by things that are happening around us in public safety, in public education, in economic development, across the departments of the city and in our partnerships. We're encouraged by the impacts these have had and will continue to have on our community. We also know we have fallen short on other things, both in the eyes of our community and in your eyes. For this, we ask your forgiveness. We stand today at the doorway of 2019. We look on with anticipation and pray that you will continue to teach us to walk in your way. We pray that you show us the way to cherish, experience, and live with the faith, hope, and love that you teach. Father, bless our community and all our citizens. Bless those who protect us and protect our liberties here, across the nation, and around the world. Father Almighty, thank you most of all for the gift that you have given us. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, Happy New Year to everyone. We will now have communications from our visitors, citizens who desire to speak on items not on the agenda, citizens who want to speak or desire to speak on matters not listed on the agenda may come forth at this time, but Madam Clerk, please read the rules, please. Communication from visitors is an opportunity for citizens to address council on matters not on the agenda. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items will be heard when the agenda item is considered. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and address. Each individual speaker shall have five uninterrupted minutes. A representative of a group may have up to 10 uninterrupted minutes. The representative shall identify the group, and a group may have no more than one spokesperson. If you would like to speak on an item that's not on the agenda, please feel free to come forth at this time, and again, state your name and your address for the record, please. If you would like to speak on an item that's not on the agenda at this time, please come forward and state your name and your address for the record, and welcome and good evening to you, sir. Good evening. My name is Garland Robert Lewis. I live at 244 Grove Park Circle, Danville, Virginia. Uh, I spoke against the rifle, uh, rifle or pistol range on Main Street, but I would like for council to consider new business, such as strip clubs, in same regulations that other cities in Virginia may have for a licensure, to make money for the city. And I would like you to consider it in closed sessions or any session. And uh, thank you for your time. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. And please state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Sharita Howard. I reside at 154 Mulberry Road. Uh, I'm here today on regards to my son, Kwame Fitzgerald, who was um, sentenced to 45 years on January 2nd, 2019. I'm not here to discuss none of the particulars of his case. I'm here to find out what steps I can do to propose a bill to have all parties held accountable for their role. As attorney <clears throat> Eric, Eric Cronin stated, there is no law against juveniles, you know, disres you know ris um, misrepresenting their age. I would like to do something to propose a bill to, held, to hold everyone accountable. If the juvenile cannot be held accountable, then the guardian. If, if this, I mean, and I have every intention, every intention 
to follow this matter aggressively. This is my son's life, 45 years. I want to know what do I need to do, what steps do I need to take in order to propose a bill. Ms. Howard, what may I suggest, first of all, thank you for being here this evening. To my left and your right, beside our clerk, is our attorney. His name is Clark Whitfield. I'm going to ask him to speak to you afterwards or get okay. in touch with you, and he can um, maybe help you more. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. State your name and your address for the record, please. Cecil Bridge 4, 709 Edmund Street, great city of Danville, Virginia, a 42-year journey. Uh, I come on behalf of senior citizens and handicapped. I encountered a person today that she is handicapped, she's elderly. She shared with me the fact that she could no longer carry her trash to the curbing, and the city charges her $5 a month, but the problem is she has to pay up front in January $260, I believe, up front. And that's after paying her taxes uh, the 1st of December. Now, for most senior citizens, and especially the handicapped, they can't come up with that lump sum of money at the beginning of especially after paying their taxes, uh, come up with the kind of money for the first of January, right after Christmas. And she was concerned, and I guess any other persons who are looking at this meeting tonight, they might be in the same predicament. Why can't they be charged $5 a month rather than for them to have to pay a lump sum up front? That's one. Number two, I hit a pothole and messed up my uh, tire and uh, lower arm on my car. It was rumored to me or someone told me that if a person's car is messed up because of a pothole, then I can uh, come to the city and, and uh, get reimbursed for my, my damages. Now, I don't know about that, but, but if that be true, uh, I need to talk to somebody that I might get reimbursed uh, for my damages and anybody else who is looking, who have hit a pothole and damaged their vehicle, uh, I think that uh, they need to be reimbursed. I thank you for your time. Thank you so much for being here, Reverend Bridge, for um, city manager and attorney. City manager, if you could talk to him about the taxes for the senior citizens and Mr. Attorney, if you could talk to Mr. Bridge for about potholes. Thank you so much, Mr. Bridge. For anyone else would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. State your name and your address, please. Minutes, council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Is there to make a motion, motion approving the meetings, the minutes of the regular city council meeting held on December 4th, 2018. Second by Councilman Campbell. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Tomer. Aye. Vice Mayor Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Under new business, consideration of granting a special use permit for a commercial recreational establishment and restaurant at 760, 762, and 764 Westover Drive. I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this item may come forward at this time. And please state your name and your address for the record, please. James Carlton Shaw, 4738 Golf Club Road, Danville, Virginia. I'm my wife and I, James Shaw and Wendy Shaw, are the uh, owners of the King's Cudgel Gaming Center and Bistro. And our proposal, I think all of you may have seen information um, in regards to this, so I'd like to answer any questions that anyone would have. Um, I, we've established previously that we absolutely are not going to be a gambling establishment of any kind, nor will we be serving any type of alcohol. 
Our vision is to be able to serve not just the youth, but anybody in the Danville area that would like to come and enjoy a family game and camaraderie and also have a good meal. Um, you know, a lot of we've researched extensively gaming centers uh, from Florida to Michigan in our travels with our other business. And, you know, we've seen a lot of opportunities. And uh, so we want to provide that to Danville. Everybody in Danville that does gaming ends up having to drive 35, 40 miles away to some other city. They're either going to Greensboro or to Roanoke or Lynchburg. And there's very little for them to do here in Danville. And we're gamers ourselves. Um, we enjoy, uh, one of my favorites is actually getting into virtual reality, and I also enjoy tabletop RPGs. And that is what we want to provide, in addition to the ability to actually have them come in and have a good meal while they're there. Any questions from council? Again, thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank, thank you, you, and hope everyone had a happy new year. Anyone else? Council Shane. I did have one. Yes, please. There were some, uh, uh, proffers that were offered. Are you in agreement with the, uh, the terms that the city staff has presented? I'm sorry? There were some terms, restrictions involved with your application. Were you in agreement with those? Yes, we were, and we actually proposed the no alcohol and, uh, and had no problems with them entering that in. Uh, we, again, we want to keep this a family environment and keep it safe for the community. So never a good idea for people to be, you know, gathering in large numbers and drinking in large numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. Miller. Yeah, uh, there are so many strip malls in Danville and other cities that are abandoned now and, and lost business. I think it's refreshing to see someone trying to develop the majority of one of these establishments. So we appreciate your, your and your wife's uh, efforts. Thank you're you. very welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just want to thank you for doing this. I got a, a four and a half year old son is already, you know, all in a video games and loves it all, so I look forward to bringing him and we'll have a really good time. Thank you for, okay. for making this investment. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you so much. Thank you. Again, anyone else who would like to speak on this agenda item may please come forward this time. Please state your name and your address for the record. Wendy Shaw, 4738 Golf Club Road, Danville, Virginia. I have lived, excuse me, lived here my entire life and there has, to my knowledge, never been a gaming center like this and I am thrilled to be able to have the opportunity to bring it to the city of Danville because I know in my years of growing up or here there has been very little for entertainment that has, does not involve drinking and any other sort of activity that is not a family type of environment <coughs> to be in. There are a lot of places that you can go after you're 21 if you're into that kind of thing. And myself, and I know a lot of my friends are not. It is going to be a place to where you can come, you can have a family environment, you can sit, have a meal, play a game, and all while feeling safe. Not feeling like you have to watch out because you never know what's not gonna happen in there. There will always be a safety presence you can come and have your kids there and feel safe about them not getting into something that they shouldn't. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And I would like to have one quick thing, if I may. Please. I would like to thank the City Council for allowing the Danville Comic Con this year. We did work with Mr. Stephen Collins, who has since passed, and we are highly looking at doing the second Comic Con coming up in 2019. Thank you so much. We're still in public hearing. Anyone would like to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. Please state your name and your address for the record. I think we know who this young man is. Welcome, sir. Welcome. <laughs> Mayor, my name is Dan Sleeper. Welcome. I'm at 384 Samuel Ben, Danville, Virginia. I'm very familiar with Jim and Wendy, and my son works with them, and I'm telling the gentleman, in the government as long as I was, this is the kind of business that you'd like to have in Danville. And I really you know, appreciate your support of the zoning issue so we can get this one started and get some family business. Mr. Steeple, let us thank you while you're here for your service to our community. Thank you so much for all you've done. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak on the item, this agenda item, may come forward at this time? I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Dr. Miller. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to propose an ordinance granting a special use permit for a commercial recreation establishment, limited indoor uses, and a restaurant in accordance with Article 3J, Section C, Item 2, and Item 13 of the Code of the City of Virginia, Danville, Virginia, 1986, amended at 760, 762, and 764 West Over Drive, otherwise known as GRID 0715, Block 003, Parcel 000007 of the City of Danville, Virginia, Zoning District Map. Thank Second you. by Councilman Shanks. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Tomer. Aye. Vice Mayor Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Consideration of a resolution in support of new legislation to enable a local referendum to consider allowing a developer to construct a resort and casino in the city of Danville, Vice Mayor. Yes, Mayor, I move that council adopt the resolution of the council of the city of Danville, Virginia, supporting new legislation that would enable a local referendum in the city of Danville to consider allowing a developer to construct and develop a resort and casino in the city of Danville. Second by Councilman Buckler, discussion of the motion. Discussion of the motion. Councilman Shanks. Mayor, I just wanted to note for the record, I've received a great deal of correspondence and it's more than 90 to 95 percent in favor of this. So I'll, I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just real quickly had a couple things I wanted to say that, um, you know, and like uh, Councilman Shanks, I've gotten a lot of feedback, um, strong opinions for and against, but the majority have been in favor of. Um, because this is the most significant economic development opportunity Danville's seen in my lifetime. We're talking about nearly 7,000 jobs and over $1 billion into our local economy over the next decade. I believe we as a city council owe it to the people of Danville to let them decide if they want to support this or not. And I want to be clear that what council's doing tonight does not mean a resort and casino will be built here. It simply means we're supporting the General Assembly taking the next step in what will ultimately be decided by the citizens of Danville. There will be a voting referendum on the ballot if this continues forward, where Danville voters will get to choose yes or no. And over the next several months, those that are for and against will be able to make their case. And they will ultimately make a decision if it gets that far. And I will support whatever decision our citizens make, but it should be their choice to make. We've been presented with an opportunity to create thousands of good paying jobs and receive millions of dollars in tax revenue each year. Revenue that can improve our schools that desperately need it. Revenue that can provide more funding for our police and firefighters. Revenue that could upgrade our aging infrastructure. If we as a council turn that away without ever giving our citizens a chance to weigh in on it, what type of representatives would we be? I've always believed in this city because I believe in our people. I believe in them now. That's why I'll be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Now, Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is clearly an emotional issue on both sides, for and against um, this issue. It all comes down to money, uh, revenue. I think that's the key. We can only tax our residents but so much. And to what? So what are the options in order to raise money for our city? I know that people feel, have strong feelings about gambling, about casinos, about lotteries. I think about 1987, thereabout, uh, Danville voted on uh, the Virginia Lottery. And by 433 votes, Danville voted no to the state lottery. However, since the state lottery passed, Dan Danville Public Schools have been getting between five and six million dollars a year in lottery funds. So I'm not making a case for lottery. I'm not making a case against lottery. I believe that the people will make that decision. I think it's very clear that people understand that council tonight is not voting for a lottery in Danville. We can't do that. The state has to say Residents of Danville, voters of Danville, you can if you want to. If the state does that, then each voter can make his or her decision whether you want a casino here, council cannot make it for you. I've gotten roughly four calls in favor of it, and I've gotten about 20 calls 
opposing it, asking me to vote no. And I try to explain this is not a council decision. This is a state decision in terms of will it allow Danville voters to make that call. So a lot of people say a misinf lot of misinformation out there. So I just want to let people know Danville City Council tonight, have the vote go, is not saying yes. It's simply saying state, let the voters decide. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Campbell. I would detail a lot has already been stated and I've gotten calls also and doing a lot of thinking of what's best for the city of Danville. Some of the comments were said, if casino come resort, we have an increase of crime. Um, if we do not have more jobs in our area, we will have an increase of crime. I think when you look at the total picture, some people say, well, the more issue, we already have gambling or a form of gambling lottery already in place. To see the possibility of growth in our city moving forward with the things that we have already in, in place and things that will be developed, our schools, the capital improvement, over $100 million, and so on and so forth with the possibility of us really moving to the next level, I would have to vote yes to move forward on uh, the casino vote. And as uh, Councilman Sherman Saunders said, we are not the ones to, to make the final decision. We're just saying we want the courage to prove it to the state, change some of the bylaws that we could have a referendum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Buckner. Everything up. Every, everybody's spot on with what they're saying tonight, guys. Um, my phone's been ringing off the hook. It's been uh, it, it very heavy in support of this thing. Uh, for me, it's a no-brainer, guys. It's uh, 7,000 potential new jobs, over a billion dollars of new spending in our city over the next 10 years. To me, that's just a that, that's a no-brainer. Um, if we don't allow our citizens this opportunity. It's a great injustice to our citizens and to the citizens of Danville. That's all. Thank you, guys. Councilman Tom. Yes. <clears throat> I, I want to thank uh, Delegate Danny Marshall and members of the uh, Virginia legislation that's working on this. I, 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 think, um, I think it's very important what, what uh, Danny Marshall and others are trying to do is to uh, bring revenue back to our area and to grow our economy. And I would be remiss without thanking him for his hard work. Um, and he, brought it to us and he, he's leaving this decision to us and ultimately a decision to the citizens of Danville and that's the way it should be. That's how democracy works is let, let the people vote on this. If, um, if they don't want it then they'll, they'll turn it down via referendum but to walk away from this opportunity I think would be foolish. Uh, we need a new police station. If you walk in our schools, look at our schools. Most of them were built in the 50s and 60s. We have a major capital improvement project in which we have to invest money in our school system. Uh, we want to bring jobs to our area. We want to grow the economy. You're looking at a potential for $20 million in additional revenue yearly in which we can use that to go out and attract other employers, to attract jobs, to rebuild the local economy, uh, to fight crime, to do all the things that our citizens ask us to do. So. I think this is an important vote. I think this could end up being one of the monumental votes that I will ever cast while on city council. And many uh, people have given me feedback and positive. There's been a few uh, feedbacks based on moral issues, and, and to that, perhaps it's the libertarian streak in me. But you know, if you if you think drinking is immoral, don't drink. If you think divorce is immoral, don't have a divorce. If you think gay marriage is immoral, then don't have a gay marriage. If you think gambling is immoral, then don't gamble. But it's not my job as a government representative to push morals on you. Those morals, choose for yourself, but don't try to tell other people what to do is basically what I'm saying. So if you have moral objections to this, that's fine. Vote no in the referendum, but let the people decide, and that's what we're doing. And so, uh, Mayor, I'll be happy to cast my vote in support of this measure. I think, uh, I think it, it could go a long way to helping uh, rebuild our city and, and bringing a diversified economy with extra revenue to help our citizens grow and to give our children a bright future. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Yes, I want to also thank Delegate Marshall for 
bringing us this opportunity. I've, <clears throat> most of the calls and emails I've gotten and Facebook things have been positive. There have been a few negative, but the vast majority is positive. And there's three reasons I'm uh, supporting this. One is schools. A recent uh, consultant's report <laughs> stated it would take $126 million to renovate, not replace, but renovate only four schools in this city. Our schools are aging. Uh, been there 50 years, uh, so just four schools, 126 million. Richmond was facing the same problem. They increased their meals tax 10 cents. Uh, remember, we had, you know, we just went up a couple of cents, and they raised 150 million dollars. They proposed a 20 percent real estate tax. Well, that flopped. Nobody was willing to pay the taxes, even for schools. So it it's going to cost to just for the schools alone, uh, our taxpayers thousands of dollars individually and millions of dollars collectively. Public safety, our police station, you know, that's one of my uh, things uh, for the last several years. It's, the station is antiquated, it's unsafe. It's unsafe for the policemen, it's unsafe for the public. Think if you were a recruit and you came here in an interview and saw that police station. You think, I, I, no way I'd sign up for this, for this police department if they had that poor facility. Uh, and if you've got people working, and they're making an average $46,000, which is well above our median salary, they're probably not out stealing and causing crime. So crime may well go down. Uh, and finally, jobs. Amazon is bringing like 5,500 jobs to Northern Virginia. They had to pay uh, $550,000 of, of incentives, a billion dollars uh, for investments up there, 190 million dollars for transportation, uh, excuse me, that was 550 million dollars of incentives to attract Amazon. This is not going to cost the city of Danville. This is going to be developed by someone else. So uh, I, I consider this as our opportunity. This is Danville's Amazon. This is Southside's Amazon. Five to seven thousand jobs at much less cost than what it's costing the state of Virginia to attract Amazon. Uh, the jobs, uh, you know, you will have a gaming commission in Virginia, and they are very strict. If you're on drugs or if you're a felon, you can't work for a casino. They monitor this very strictly in these cities. So I think crime overall will go down. So this is our big opportunity. Uh, and as other people have said, uh, we're not going to probably, in this council, get such a significant vote that can do so much for this city and this area. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council. Um, I'll just say this before I call for the vote. Um, I heard all council members in response to how many calls and messages that you received. I can't begin to tell you how many I received and how many calls, and that's what the mayor's job is. I've tried to return everybody's call and I, or email. And I thought about it very diligently when Delegate Danny Marshall came to us. It was great pride for me as a new mayor that he took out time to come before us as a city out of respect to say, okay, this is what I'm about to present. I want to know what you all think and I want to know what the people think. And when we sat in that meeting to listen to our delegate respect our community, because he could have went on to the General Assembly and not stopped by here, but he did. He and, the, he and the persons from Bristol. As council people, we have a duty to our people. And just a couple of months ago, we sat in a joint meeting with the school board. And RRMM presented to the council and the school board, as Dr. Miller stated, George Washington High School built in the 50s. John M. Langston, built in the 50s. Woodbury Hills, built in the 50s. And GLH Johnson. We didn't ask for new schools. Just to upfit these schools was $126 million. I asked the city manager, and I just want to make sure everybody understands where I stand on this. Ever since I've been on council, one of the hardest jobs that I've had on council is when it comes budget time and a city manager will share with us, we may have to increase taxes. You heard Reverend Bridgeforth just a few minutes ago talking about our senior citizens. 
That's the hardest thing for me as a council member because I don't want to raise taxes on our community. City manager, how much, if we was to accept what the school board has presented to us, what would be the tax base for our community? Appreciate you giving me a heads up on the question. Yeah. It takes a little bit to <laughs> calculate. <Yeah. laughs> uh, if, it's, if you had to borrow $126 million um, through a, a referendum, uh, typically you'd have an annual debt service of about $7 million per year over 30 years with the 3.75% interest rate, which would equate to about 31.4 cents on the tax. Um, so you'd have to increase taxes 31.4 cents which would put us above the average for cities in our uh, in, in Virginia, as far as real estate tax is concerned. So this is this uh, like well, like it was first stated earlier. This is nothing that says the city council. The only thing we're voting on tonight is a resolution to support the citizens. And everything has been said about me and all council members, as Councilman Saunders stated. So much misinformation is out there. But we went to talk, the citizens of this community sent us down to Greenville, South Carolina to see how we can do better in this community because we lost a lot in this community. And there are some things that have council concern right now. Yes, council's concerned about crime. Council's, we got three strategic plans and we stand by them and we, they're not just things that we say, reduce violent crime, support education and grow Danville. And if you notice, we have more, now we got another school accredited. We're getting there. So I close by saying this, you, when I ran for city council, motto I had a couple of years was go, ago was for all people. And I stand by that today. And if this passed through the General Assembly, all people who are registered voters get an opportunity to cast their vote either yay or nay. Councilman Whittle. Uh, Danny also and uh, th it all comes down to three things and it's uh, jobs, jobs, and jobs. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be voting to support it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, call the roll please. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Tomer. Aye. Vice Mayor Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Communication, City Manager. I have nothing to see, sir. Thank you. City Attorney? Uh, nothing to, to wish everybody Happy New Year. City Clerk? Nothing, sir. Call the roll, please. Dr. Miller? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, one other additional thing. You know, I've been to Las Vegas two or three times. I've never gambled at all. But the entertainment and the shows they have are magnificent. And I think a convention center such as this, Casino Convention Center, is going to attract a lot of good entertainment and a lot of good restaurants. Uh, Tomorrow night, Parks and Rec, uh, from 3 to 7 in the Pepsi building, is going to hear citizen input on the, the River Trail expansion. Uh, they'd like to expand it out into the community. Uh, you know, uh, if you go back about 20 plus years, I was on Parks and Rec's committee and we campaigned to put trails in the city. And we actually went to communities and tried to get people to put these in their neighborhoods. And many people were for that, but many people were against it. They were afraid of crime. Somebody was going to come off the river, the uh, walking trail behind their house and break in their house and steal their TV and so forth. So there was a lot of petitions against it. So we settled on putting it along the trail because the city owned that property. So maybe times have changed and people realize what a benefit it is to have these trails in your neighborhood. My sister has lived, lived in Cary for 20 years with a trail going behind her house, and not once did anybody break in her house off that trail, or in, in, anywhere in the neighborhood or along that trail. People are walking, they're exercising, they're biking, they're not going to break in your house. I mean, if somebody will break in your house, they drive up with a van in the middle of the day and, you know, break in and you can't carry a TV and everything like that on a bicycle and pedal off with it. So maybe times have changed. So the, well, my point is, go out tomorrow night and give your input and see what, what uh, neighborhoods they like to expand the trail to, and let's have the citizen input from 3 to 7 at the Pepsi building tomorrow. Just go anytime. Just give your input to Parks and Recs. And uh, Happy New Year to everyone. It's going to be a great year in Danville. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to also say welcome, Mr. Sleeper. Good to see you again. 
and it's always a pleasure. Also, Mr. Mayor, I would like for the city manager to get the opportunity to talk to uh, Mr. Sleeper and others about VIR. That's, that's a real partnership that's really paying big dividends for our region, and no water is an issue for them. So if I could get the manager to talk to Mr. Sleeper, uh, Pogan Halifax County, and to the partnership can bring, I think that'll be uh, very good. Also, a special thank to the city manager and his staff uh, for the work we're doing, economic development. The 500 jobs, Mr. Mayor, that you announced uh, just recently is a big plus for our city with an average wage of $38,000 per year. Yes, our city, we have had challenges. Yes, we are making progress, but we are not where we were. Good things have happened, and they continue to happen. Regardless of our finances, regardless of our ups and downs, I love the city, and I love the people in it, and I'll stand up for it anytime, anywhere. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, in tonight's prayer, I, I think it was clear to, to me and perhaps anyone listening that I feel very optimistic about our community and the things that occurred this past year and the things that I think will likely occur in the year to come. And I'm just uh, very proud of the work of our city council and our economic development staff and um, not just that staff but the entire City of Danville, was, it's a team effort in recruiting businesses, and I just feel that we've really had a good year, and the year to come is going to be as, well, as good, if not better. Also wanted to say Happy New Year to everyone, and I'm looking forward to working with this city council. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Toma? Uh, nothing this evening. Thank you. Vice Mayor Vogel? Yeah, Councilman uh, Shanks and Councilman Saunders both made a lot of a lot of the points that uh, that, that I was going to make, and I, I don't want to give one of those long Vogler Buster speeches speeches tonight. So I'll just I'll uh, I'll say this, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart: 2019 is going to be the year of Danville, Virginia. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Whittle. Um, I can. They got that straightened up, and I, uh, Bryce um, and um, oh, and Brian got that straightened out. For Mr. Ray, he's extremely persistent, uh, but he's got it done. And there was um, also that that stormwater bunker that went in at the end of Carolina and Stratford Place got in, and that seems to be holding up real well. And other folks are happy there, though. Thank you. Mr. Buckner? Nothing tonight, thank you. Reverend Campbell? Yes, I just like to ditto for words have already been stated. I think that the city of Danville, we are blessed. We had challenges of last year, but yet things are moving forward. I think 2019 is going to be a great year. We are blessed to have a, a good council. We work together very well. And you hear so many stories to other municipalities where there's so much division, and we can take it to another level that the city council and the county supervisor we work well together and if you want to take a further than that i thank god for danny marshall and the supervisors and so forth we work well together so that's exciting to me and lastly mr mayor is that i want to remind everyone about the SCLC march this month stop the killer march and we want to move forward on that thank you Mr. Mayor. thank you mayor jones just want to um miss mitchell and miss richardson they want to, I want to apologize. I said earlier we had another school at John, uh, Schoolfield um, accredited. We also have Park Avenue that's been accredited. So as it's been stated, great news. I just want to say to everyone here, thank you so much for attending our meeting, the first of the year. Thank you so much. Feel free to come. This is your council. Feel free to come at any time. And on that note, meeting adjourned. <laughs>